What are the different ways the Holy Spirit could speak to us? One of the ways God establishes his presence is through the small, still voice. The Lord told Elijah to stand on the mountain in his presence, but he didn't come in the ways Elijah, or we, would have expected. Elijah saw a powerful wind, a mighty earthquake, and a fierce fire, but God wasn't in any of them. And then, after he kept waiting, and waiting, and waiting, God spoke to him in a still, small voice, also translated a gentle whisper. In the Hebrew language, the phrase for gentle whisper is kol damamadaka, meaning the sound of thin silence. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 12 says, And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. I honestly believe that God does this because he does not need to compete for attention with anyone. He doesn't need to yell and scream and push and pull, competing with all the other voices in your life. A true child of God won't be mesmerized by a powerful wind, a mighty earthquake, a fierce fire, a friend, a family member, or a newspaper. These are all things that will generally take up your attention. Yet God comes quietly in a still small voice. God said in John chapter 10 verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You and I need to follow the voice of God. If we are indeed the followers of the Lord, we won't go anywhere until we have heard the voice of God. And you know what the story of Elijah tells me? It tells me that God doesn't always speak first. Sometimes the devil speaks first. And you hear some people say, I will always follow my first thought. God doesn't always speak first. Sometimes the devil speaks first. And sometimes God lets the devil say all he has to say, then he speaks. God competes with no one. This is still his universe, whether we obey his voice or not. He is still God, whether we obey him or not. He doesn't panic when he sees the devil trying to speak to you first. God expects his children, his sheep, to know his voice. John chapter 10 verses 1 through 5 says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. He doesn't panic when he sees the devil trying to speak to you first. God expects his children, his sheep, to know his voice. Secondly, God speaks through the scriptures. You might be thinking the only reason God asked Joshua to keep reading from the book of the law is to get good success. That's not the only reason. Another reason is that God speaks through that book. God speaks most clearly to us in this day through his word. The more we learn it, the more ready we will be to recognize his voice when he speaks, and the more likely we are to obey what we hear. The scriptures are filled with the words of the Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, New King James Version says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That means God is whispering, and sometimes shouting, all through his word, giving us instructions, through the word of God. The Lord can literally speak to you and guide you through every problem. What problem are you facing today? What is making you lose sleep over? Is it financial issues? Well, the word of God has the answers for you. Is it marital problems? The Word of God has the answer. Every problem you are facing, big or small, can and will be solved through the Word of the Living God. When you read the Bible always, you inject into yourself the Word of God. Whenever you are in trouble, the Word pops up from your mind and you speak it to comfort yourself. Reading the Word of God is like installing the voice into your life and it comes out when it's needed. Don't run from reading the Word of God. You can easily get it anywhere in any form. Don't be devoid of the Word of God. 
Proverbs chapter 6, verse 21 through 23. The psalmist described what the word of God is like to him in Psalm 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And thirdly, God speaks through the audible voice. Though seemingly rare, God spoke audibly to Moses from the burning bush in Exodus chapter 3, verses 4 through 6. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. The Bible described the voice of God to be a gigantic thing. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 2 of the King James Version, it says, And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. The number one question Christians ask is, How can I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit? What do I have to do to hear this voice? These questions, I can say, come from people who are ready to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. They are the right questions every Christian who desires to hear the voice of God must ask. What do we have to do to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit? 1. Be ready to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. The first thing is to be ready. Have the mind that you want to hear the voice. Have the desire. This means you are ready to give it all to hear the Holy Spirit talk to you. You cannot claim to be ready to hear the Holy Spirit speak if you don't want to give it all to hear Him speak. If you want to learn in a class where your teacher teaches you new things, you cannot use your headphones and listen to music at the same time. If you do this, then you are not ready to hear the teacher or to learn. In this same way, you have to be ready to stop blocking your ears with unnecessary sounds and be ready. 2. Pray that you want to hear the Holy Spirit. Matthew 7 verse 7 Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. You will need to pray that God opens your ears to the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Prayer will do this for you and God will do that for you. You have to pray. It prepares you to hear from the Holy Spirit. It also shows the readiness on your part to hear the Holy Spirit. 3. Pay attention. If you want to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, you have to pay attention. You need to be attentive. If you allow noise in you, you will not achieve the goal of hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. Shut out other voices. They are distractions. They are keeping you away from the voice of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 28 verse 23 Give ear and hear my voice. Listen and hear my speech. Job 33 verse 31 If not, listen to me. Hold your peace and I will teach you wisdom. All that is required of you at times to be able to hear the Holy Spirit is for you to be still Hold your peace and be attentive to what he has to say. Many people are fond of fighting the voices in their heads. They don't know how to be attentive and listen if it is the Holy Spirit or not. They are quick to reject any voice. You need to learn to listen and know that which is the Holy Spirit. 1 John 4 verses 1 to 2 Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. 4. Read the Scriptures constantly First of all, apart from reading to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, there is a huge blessing reading the Scriptures. Many places in the Bible assured blessings by reading the scriptures. Psalm 1 verses 1 to 3 When we read the word of God, 
there are particular verses that the Holy Spirit will use to minister to us. These verses will always address the exact situation or challenges we are facing at that particular time. There are also many promises of God in the Bible that the Holy Spirit wants to tell us. He wants to make sure we get the promise and use it to comfort us. But how will He do that if we refuse to open the Bible and read? We need to understand that the Bible is a great weapon that is fully packaged for us to use as Christians. We shouldn't make the reading of the Bible a Sunday thing. It is not only Sundays that we should remember the Bible. We need it every day. Hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit doesn't come by putting the Bible under the pillow before sleeping at night, as some people do. You don't put the Bible under the pillow to chase away troubles or demons, but you out the Word of God in your heart. The heart is where the Word should be, and it goes into the heart through reading. We need to start reading the Word of God every day. And number five, build a strong relationship with God. Some people say I've been a Christian for 20 to 30 years and I still don't know the voice of God. Of course you don't. You don't go to prayer meetings, you don't read your Bible, you don't pray to God on a daily basis. You're still praying the prayers you learned in Sunday school. You don't invest in building. Having a great relationship with God opens you to know more about how God communicates with his people. How do you build a strong relationship with God? The first is by accepting Christ. Jesus is the way to God. You need Christ in your life. Without Christ in your life, the Holy Spirit would not be available in the first place. After accepting Jesus, all you need to do is to stay in Christ. Of course, there will be storms or heavy winds to blow you off the right path, but you have to hold tight to Christ. You must be sure that Christ is in the boat of your life so he can stop the storms. One thing is to hear the Holy Spirit speak to us. Another thing is to obey him at all times. We are praying to hear from him now. Are we ready to obey all he says to us? We must be ready to accept all he says and do according to his words.